Thank you very much. Um, with that introduction, when I first got here to Duke, uh, the dean used to uh, introduce me as having worked for those various firms and said, don't worry, we don't let him close to any of our money. <laughs> so uh, so uh, it was, uh, it's, it, Wall Street gave me a great education and, and I'm very appreciative of it. Today I'd like to talk to you about something that's near and dear to my heart, and that's effective innovation. Not innovation that is aimless, not innovation for its own sake, not innovation that goes nowhere, and because there's a lot of that, but rather innovation that has a purpose, innovation that has or a, a goal to do good for, for both the, the world as well as to make, make uh, uh, our lives easier. Innovation that solves big problems. This sort of innovation requires at its very core imagination. It's the same sort of imagination that causes us to look over the horizon and wonder what the world was like out there it's the same sort of imagination that causes us to wonder, what was it that caused our cells to reproduce according to the same old pattern? It was the same sort of imagination that caused us to wonder what it would be like to fly. And yet, with each one of these things, if you think about it, people thought it couldn't be done. People thought you would fall off the edge of the earth. People thought that, that there was nothing to be found inside the cell. That, uh, uh, and people thought that, uh, that man was never destined to fly. And yet, we, we have to think, one of the reasons that, that gets us into this mess is that we have these, this received wisdom of, of, uh, of the way the world works. Some of it's almost myth-like. And John F. Kennedy, in his 1962 address to... Uh, the Yale graduating class actually addressed the difference between truth and myth and how myth and perceived wisdom often got into uh, trouble with helping us find truth. He said, for the great, great enemy of the truth is very often not the lie, deliberate, contrived, and dishonest, but the myth, persistent, dissuasive, uh, persuasive, and unrealistic. Too often we hold fast to the cliches of our forebears. We subject all facts to a prefabricated set of interpretations. We enjoy the comfort of opinion without the discomfort of thought. Yeah, we saw this. And yet, one of the companies in which I'm involved, Eight Rivers Capital here in Durham, we take on large problems, we take on myth, we take on things that other people thought could not be solved, and we try to address it. What do you see here? That's not a pretty picture. It's not a pretty picture. I mean, it happens to be, right, by the way, that the stuff coming out on the right is just steam. But the stuff coming out on the left is really smoke. And the stuff, it, it, involves, uh, it involves hydrocarbons. It involves, uh, it involves the precursors of acid rain. There's probably some mercury in there. There's probably some uranium in there. There's probably some antimony in there. There's probably a lot of nasty things in there, including carbon dioxide. It's a pretty nasty thing, and we've all come to believe that coal can never, ever be clean, that coal is something that we need to relegate to the history books. Yet, just imagine a plant, a coal plant, where there's no CO2 released in the atmosphere, it's all captured. Just imagine a coal plant where we don't need water for cooling. Just imagine a coal plant where we don't release any toxics to the atmosphere. Just imagine a coal plant where we do all of that with a cost of electricity, half that of the cheapest cost of electricity out there today. And, of course, everything else out there today is polluting. You know, this, comes, this falls within what Bill Gates asked in TED 2010. He asked for wanted energy miracles. This truly is an energy miracle. We imagined all that, and we called it net power. How did we do it? We assembled a great group of people, people who like to work together. 
people who are people are here from uh, from students at Duke, students at Carolina, uh, uh, scientists in the UK, scientists from other places. We put together the team of people who like to think outside the box and like to think about these problems. Then we went for the problems. The problem for us, we defined it well because we, in our world, our, our construct is we always start with problems. We don't start with the widget, we don't start with the technology, we start with problems and then figure out whether we have something we can bring to bear. And by starting with problems, it's, it, it's really empowering because, because innovations tend to come from a single person, whereas problems can be solved by, by everyone. In this audience here, for instance, there may be three or four or five or ten innovators, people who, consider, who's, who are constantly turning out inventions, but every single person in this audience is a problem solver. And solutions of problems aren't just technology. Solutions of problems come in flavors of policy. They come in flavors of, of people, participants, partners. They come in all sorts of flavors. And by, by being problem focused, you can engage a much larger army to deal with a problem. And then the solution itself. The solution for us to get to the solution, we took away every other solution out there. Every other solution out there and started with a blank sheet of paper. You know what happened? We had to go finance this. We went to Silicon Valley. We heard great things. You know, we generally see evolutionary technologies. This is revolutionary. This is the first new thermodynamic cycle we've seen in decades. It's so simple, yet it's never been done before. And by the way, it was almost deafening what I was hearing, the internal monologue of this last person. They were actually thinking, why didn't I think of this myself? And yet, they also told us, this technology is bigger than venture capital. It takes more money than VC. So we went to government and the industry. What do we hear from there? One major uh, power company said, the future of energy is either this or something very much like this. One of the senior most people at the Department of Energy said, this technology uh, meets every climate target we have, including the 2050 climate target, and it's the first one like that we've seen. We had someone, another uh, uh, industry participant said, given the stakes, the expenditures here are, are inconsequential. So while we got the VCs online, we were able to, to extend our, our breadth by, by getting the, uh, the uh, energy, getting uh, government and industry on, on board. This is helpful to understand this graph. Many people talked about valleys of death, but the most important thing you can hear is that valleys of death are different depending on technologies. Most of the time you hear the valley of death is that little shallow thing that you see behind me. It's the valley of death that's five to $15 million deep worth of uh, expenditures, and maybe two to three years wide, and that's the internet and the IT valley of death. And medical devices are a little deeper and a little wider, but both of those fit very well within the venture capital model. You get beyond that into pharma and then large-scale industrial and energy technology, you need to bring on different partners. And that's what we did. Now, going back, what we've learned here in this whole net power uh, world, we've learned several things. First of all, we don't start with widgets. We don't start with problems. Because problems often are search, I mean solutions, we, innovations. They often start looking for, uh, for commercial applications, and we, and we just can't find them. Um, it also involves very few people. Our preference here is solving a problem is a collaborative exercise. By solving a problem as a collaborative exercise, we're able to involve people like everyone here, we're able to involve policy solutions. We're able to choose problems that have social aspects and technological aspects. We're able to, to, uh, to, to make a problem uh, be fit right straight into Duke University's uh, mantra, knowledge in service to society. By doing that, we find a focus, and we can help focus all the participants. So as all of you go out into the world, 
Live your lives. Make your impact. Think of these things. Dream big. Identify big problems. Be solution agnostic. Don't start with what other people think is the solution. And finally, march to a different drummer. Thank you very much.